Hey everybody, uh, Stone here, Stone J. Um, some of you might know me already. Uh, welcome to those who don't. Uh, this is Introduction to Onk Homestead Part 1. I'm going to take these off because the light's reflecting. Introduction to homest Onk Homestead Part 1. This is going to be just a talk through of, of what this channel is going to be about, and a little bit about the philosophy and how I arrived here. Um, first thing I want to mention is if you're going to follow this channel, there's two things you need to be aware of. One, I'm retired military. I tend to cuss when I get uh, excited and passionate or angry or upset. Um, so there will be a few cuss words in some of the videos. Uh, sorry, not sorry. Uh, that's my personality. Uh, number two, I smoke a lot. So you will see throughout various videos, you will see a cigarette hanging out of my mouth. Um, that's my thing. Okay? You've been warned. Um, getting back to the introduction. Somewhere up here, you'll see the Hong Homestead symbol. It's basically a, a cross with a teardrop top. An upside down teardrop. Anyway, you'll see it. <coughs> And the reason that I landed on Ankh, I, I used this years and years ago. Um, Ankh is an Egyptian symbol for life. And more specifically, um, the essence of life. And to me, farming, homesteading, self-sufficiency, when you're raising your own food, you're responsible for care of your own place and all of the things that you benefit from working with your own piece of land um, or working with uh, natural functions. Uh, the benefits you get back from that, to me, that represents the essence of life. So the Ankh was a perfect symbol in my mind. Uh, that's, that's what that is. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is a little bit about uh, how I arrived here. Um, Grew up running the mountains and uh, playing in the creek and the swamp bed and raising animals. Uh, and lived all over the world and immersed myself in cultures and especially the, the down-home uh, country folk of the various cultures. And uh, the one thing that I landed on, especially in, in our society today in more developed countries like here in the United States. Um, the people who are working the land, who relied on their effort combined with uh, nature um, for their daily life, uh, self-sufficiency, they were genuinely happy. They, they had a happiness in them um, perhaps some of these pl people was because they didn't know a lot of our first world advantages. Uh, they weren't aware of these things. And a lot of it was because they chose to follow the tradition of uh, their forefathers, their ancestors, the pioneers before them, and live the lifestyle that was common in their area before technology take o took over. Uh, so that's kind of... That's kind of why I'm so drawn to this, is, is there's a happiness and a joy. Now, don't get me wrong, there's pros and cons, and there's going to be moments of terror in your experience, um, and there's going to be disappointment. Um, it all depends on how you choose to look at it. Mental philosophy, mental uh, um, strength has a lot to do with this lifestyle. I'm not going to tell you what homesteading is. There's hundreds of books and dozens of YouTube channels. They'll all give you their own idea. To me, homesteading is following a pioneer mindset um, of taking care of yourself and what's yours. Uh, philosophy, another philosophy that, that lends to that, that's been passed down in my family, uh, maybe not verbally, but through... Um, uh, experience and observation and I pass it on to my kids is you work with what you have where you're at 
and you figure it out and make it work. Um, you could fail over and over and over again, but if you're learning something from each failure and progressing with each effort, you'll get there. Homesteading can be a very expensive experience, but it doesn't have to be. Uh, general infrastructure at first um, can take some money, but by and large, the success or failure of your overall homestead experience is going to be um, dedication and effort. You can develop this philosophy and, and, and approach this lifestyle, whether you have 100 acres or two acres or uh, live in an apartment or a suburban setting. It, on a quarter acre, you can be almost completely self-sufficient. The other thing that I think lends a lot to the homesteading attitude is uh, getting away from the idea of throwing money at every problem. Problem, solution. The difference with homesteading is what's in the middle here? You are. You are the difference between the problem and the solution. Um, modern thinking and, uh, sorry, but city living, a lot of that tends to, the, the difference between the problem and solution is money. Um, electrical problem, you call Fred the electrician and you write a check. Uh, plumbing problem, you call Bill the plumber and you whip out the credit card. Uh, you know, they, these, are, these are modern solutions. Now, fair trade, sure, but with the homestead or pioneer attitude, the difference between the problem and solution is you. How you choose to uh, bridge those being in the middle, that's up to you. I prefer to work with what I have, where I'm at, and figure out a way to make it work so that I can spend my money on uh, further developing my homestead or doing the things that I enjoy doing off-site. Uh, to me, paying somebody else to solve your problems is not, uh, it's not the homesteading attitude unless it's something that you just cannot do. The, uh, my background, re besides being retired military, I had a farm for years. Um, lost that a few years ago because the lease, uh, lease owner went in a different direction, sold the property. Uh, the whole farm was turned into a uh, manicured lawn. I know a little bit about what I'm doing because I've been doing it a long time. I've been through the Master Gardener program. I've taken hands-on courses um, through a wide variety of things. One thing that I urge you to do before you set out on this journey is research, research, research. Ask all the questions. There's no dumb questions. Um, Get the books, read the books. I've been doing this for years and I'm still learning things either through experience or research. And I refer to books that I bought 25 years ago, often, whether it's for gardening or home repair or animal care. Um, research, research, research. So anyway, that kind of gives you an idea of where we're heading here. Uh, Part two of this, which I'll put up in a couple of days, will be an actual walkthrough. We have two acres here, like I said, uh, or may not have mentioned, I don't know. Old farmhouse over 100 years old uh, that's been added to and upgraded and whatnot. Barn, shop, garage, uh, storage buildings, excuse me, well house. Um, part two will be a walkthrough, and I'll show you what I have to work with and the direction that we're going and the things that we're trying to do. I'm not just going to show you all of the successes. I'm going to show you a lot of the uh, mistakes and I've made more than my share because I tend to be a little stubborn. <clears throat> but 
come on along. You know, follow us on our journey. Um, maybe it'll help you with your planning or your efforts at your own place. Uh, the hope is that uh, I can help you develop the philosophy and mindset. So, thank you for watching. Um, make sure you subscribe, hit the little bell uh, so that you get notified when, when new videos get added. And go to, there's a link here somewhere, I don't know, it goes to our Facebook page. Um, things that are textual, uh, articles and forms and things that I've found useful, those will be posted in the Facebook, on the Facebook page, um, rather than making whole videos to explain one little graphic to you. Um, so, yeah. Just come along for the journey. Give me your feedback. Let me know if you enjoy this. Uh, we'll, we'll get into part two in a couple of days. And I hope that you'll come back and, and, and visit and enjoy it with us. Uh, so, I think that's about it. I got to get back out there. Uh, get some things done. Talk to you soon. Bye.